In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I turn the toe kick of my kitchen cabinets into drawers. The toe kick is designed so that you can stand right up to a cabinet with your feet having a place to go. And these are typically a few inches tall so they are perfect for making shallow drawers. Now, I will tell you that this project turned out to be a pain in the butt. I ran into a few problems which I'll show you. It's nothing that couldn't be overcome, it was just, uh, there's a few things about my situation that made it special, but typically this is a quick and easy process that will give you more space to utilize in your kitchen. Enough with the prelude, let's get into the process. The first step in the process is to remove the existing toe kick. Typically these are held on with some simple brad nails so it's very easy to pop off. However, mine was grouted in, and this is because whoever built the house, they tiled after the island was put into place. Then they just used grout to fill in the gap. I popped on a carbide cutting tool on my multi-tool and made a cut flush with the toe kick down the entire length. And I wasn't trying to cut the full depth of the toe kick. I was just trying to cut enough so that it could break loose. But even after two passes, it did not want to break loose. Wow. Oh, to help me pull it, I ran a screw in and then used a pair of pliers to give it all my might. Got it. I mean, really. Finally, when they busted loose, I saw the type of hardware used to hold it in place. And these fasteners are actually pretty cool, but on that day, I hated them. By pulling them off, I busted the hardware. It's no big deal though, as I unscrewed them and threw them away. Okay, now I gotta look inside the hollow space, or what I expected to be hollow. Typically, islands are held in place by a block of wood in each corner, but whoever framed up this one laid a two by four across the entire front, back, and sides. No problem, this is still work for my needs. It just means that I'm gonna lose an inch of overall depth of my drawers. A Pyrex dish is about two and a quarter inches. So anything over that and I'm good. So now let's go down to the shop and start building the drawers to fit the space. I'm using some scrap half inch plywood to build mine and I never do anything fancy when building drawers. I attach the sides to the bottom with wood glue and brad nails so it's super quick and simple but regardless of what I've put in them, I've never had one fail. So don't feel like you have to make them complicated. Hey, my amazing woodworking community. There is another amazing community I have to tell you about. It's a community that invests in art with masterworks.io. Masterworks is the only investing platform democratizing this exclusive $1.7 trillion asset class. They give people like you and me access to the investment that millionaires and billionaires, from woodworkers to real estate developers, have been enjoying for generations. So what do these bigwigs know that we don't? UBS reports that two thirds of high net worth collectors buy art for expected ROI. Real assets like art appreciate well on average when inflation is high. Blue chip art prices outpace the S&P 500 by 164% from 1995 to 2021. As always, in everything related to investment, tread carefully, nothing is risk free. But you can join the art investing movement today by using my link below to get a priority access and start investing. And of course, it really helps out the channel. On the same train of thought of keeping it simple, I'm not using drawer slides. Instead, I'm using some wooden scraps to build some runners. Slides are expensive and they certainly have their place, but on simple projects like this, wood works great and it keeps the cost down low. Each cavity on my island will have two drawers. I put an L shape on the sides and then a T shape in the center. Simple. Now, to make it glide easy, a trick I use is to put down a strip of peel and stick melamine edge banding. You can buy it in a roll, cut it to length, and put it on the runner, as well as the bottom side of the drawer. You won't know what hit ya. Well, I guess that saying doesn't work here, but you're gonna love it. Making these runners is super simple. I mix some half inch with some quarter inch material to create the shapes. Some wood glue, brad nails, and then you're done. Now let's haul this back up to the kitchen and start installing. Now I need these runners to lay flat and since I have that two by four framing, I just needed to add a framing member to the center and both sides where these runners will be installed. 
After cutting some 2x4s to length, I applied some Dynagrip to one side and then put them in position. And this stuff is great. It's made by DAP and it's meant for situations like this where you need something to grab really quick but strong. It's for both interior and exterior uses and can work on multiple material surfaces such as wood and tile. I used the same Dynagrip to attach my runners in place, making sure they were facing the right direction. And I'm reaching inside to apply at least some pressure for a few seconds while it sets up. While it was setting up, I went back down to the shop to start making the drawer faces. Now, typically, if you don't have to wrestle your toe kicks off, you can reuse them for your drawer faces. They're already the right height and color. You just need to cut them to length. But since mine got damaged so heavily, I used some three quarter inch ply instead. I also added two pieces to act as a drawer pull. The color doesn't match perfectly with the cabinets, but it will be in the shadows and a funny story to tell if it ever comes up. To attach these, I pulled the drawer out slightly, then set the faceplate on spacers while I went to the inside to attach it with screws. One downside to not going with store-bought sliders is the drawer will tip down once it's pulled out far enough. This doesn't bother me, but if you have flooring that can scratch, a tip is to place a strip of felt on the bottom side of the drawer face, and this will prevent any scratching or annoying noises. And with that, there's only one last thing for me to fix, the grout line I destroyed. With my situation, since I had to tear up my grout line, I don't want to see that. And instead of re-grouting, instead, I'm just gonna put in some drawer stops so that the drawers won't ever go past that point, completely hiding that tore up line. I kept it simple with the stops. I just ran in a screw. I played with the depth of it so that the drawer landed exactly where it would cover up that grout line. Perfect. Well, kinda. <laughs> all in all, this project gave me a little bit more trouble than what I was expecting, but there are solutions to all the problems. And at the end of the day, I now have four additional drawers that I'll be able to utilize for different pans and trays. It took me a single day. I used nothing but scraps, so I was only at the cost of melamine edge banding and Dynagrip adhesive. Not bad. If you're wanting to do the same project, then I hope that this video has helped you out. Who knows, maybe you'll run into some of the same problems I did and already know a solution for them. I'll see you on my next project, guys. If you're looking for a next project, I recommend this coffee table I designed that has adjustable heights. You can fold out the tall legs to eat from it, or you can tuck those up and bring out the shorter legs for it to be a standard coffee table. You can click here for plans and here to subscribe to the channel.